So if you want to become a doctor and you haven't studied chemistry, you are so in deep trouble. This yeah. is Senate House. This is where you graduate. Uh, so to be a surgeon is like eight, nine, 10 years after postgraduate. Come and see us and we'll advise you your local area, how to get some of this experience. Do you know they compete Oxford and Cambridge? They compete against each other all the time. All the time. All the time. Dreaming of studying medicine in the UK, but don't know where to start. This isn't just wishful thinking. It's an achievable goal when approached strategically. Ray, an expert in international education, joins us to break down faculty selection, preparation steps, and why getting into medical school requires more than just good grades. We've covered other aspects of studying abroad with Ray before, so this conversation builds on practical insights that actually work. As you probably know already, Ray, that I am, or we are considering medicine for my daughter. Okay. So choosing between biomed or medicine. <laughs> yes. It's much easier to get into biomed. I think it would be fair to say. Yes. Then into medicine. Yes. And also, are you studying biomedical or are you studying bioscience or are you studying biochemistry? Because again, those distinctions, biochemistry yeah. is harder than biomedicine. Well, you're not, not. You are. And yeah. so if you, in terms of like what they demand from you, mm -hmm. and so again, if you have that knowledge, you'll be able to advise people which particular things. Now medicine is... Let's talk a, about medicine. Okay, medicine is a yeah. different ball game. Yeah. Medicine is one of those things where, ironically, they don't take all doctors with A star, A star, A star. That's not the point. That's yes, you have to be, you have to be academic, mm -hmm. but if you, if you have got A star AA, but we think that you're gonna be a good doctor, they'll take you. So it's not about your asterisks, it's not about your A stars only. Okay, chemistry, biology, and what else? Uh, chemistry, biology, maybe math, but just those two. What about uh, physics? Uh, can you have physics to chemistry? No, no, you can, yeah? but if you, uh, the, the key question then becomes, what is the most important A level that I will study to be a doctor? Yeah. Have a guess. What do you think? Biology. Good guess but it's chemistry. Oh, is it? Ironically, and they say, well, hang on, isn't this body is bio, isn't that right? Yeah. Chemistry underpins everything. Uh -huh. So if your chemistry is really, really good and your bio is good and the rest are good, that's fine. Uh, but it's chem that drives it. Um, and the other thing is that they're looking for the breadth. So you say, oh yeah, I studied phys chem biomass. Okay, so you're a human being and you deal with human beings as you're a doctor. Mm -hmm. Have you done any arts or any humanities. No, this can buy a mask. Well, we prefer somebody who's a little bit more balanced. Did you do literature? No, because I want to be a doctor. I want to be a scientist. No, but if okay. you study literature, then you're interesting for me. What about, what about drama? Because drama is a social skills. It's very important for the, for the doctor to do. You know, you're right, but here's the thing. If you know, I would not touch drama. Now, this is the difference. If you know what you're doing now, Drama is great, but mm -hmm. it's not what they call a facilitating subject. Okay. So there's a list of subjects where, look, it's great, mm -hmm. but really it's not academically challenging enough for us to count it as a full A-level. If you know what the facilitating subjects are, when you're pre-university, we will help you to make the choice of your A-levels mm -hmm. because it's critical. So if you want to become a doctor and you haven't studied chemistry, you are so in deep trouble your application will be. And so that's why it's not just first the two months before your application. You should be looking at this when you decide your A-level subject. But you mentioned literature. Yes, uh, literature is fantastic. You might even So you, you're saying it's a facilitating subject for, for medicine? Literature is a facilitating subject oh, because yes. they want a balance. Yes, okay, mm. you're a great scientist. On but, top of chemistry and biology, obviously. Yes, yeah. but if you offered me chemistry, biology, uh, maths and literature, Great, that's great. Mm -hmm. If you offered me biology, chemistry, literature, and physics, I would, I would have us be thinking, is that it? You, you've got nothing else. You, you, you haven't got a breadth of interest at all. Mm -hmm. And so, again, advice of that sort will really help you. But this is advice two years before you make the application. Yeah. So if you come to us, if you talk to us, we'll be able to advise you.
When should preparation for medical school actually begin? In Britain, students start making critical decisions at 1415, selecting core subjects like chemistry, biology, and mathematics, all mandatory for medical applications. But here's what many miss. British medical schools value well-rounded profiles. Adding literature or history demonstrates intellectual breadth beyond sciences. With competition for places incredibly fierce, early preparation isn't optional advice, it's essential strategy. The students who secure spots are those who started planning years ahead, not months. The number of things I bought for my son from here, the college tie, the scar, yeah. the, the, the gown, oh my goodness. Oh, well, yeah, they have uh, uh, college. Yeah. This is they have ties for all colleges. Yeah, well, I'll show you. Oh. So you see these colleges here? Yeah. Each one has a different tie. Uh -huh. See this? And some of them are winter ties, mm -hmm. and some of them are summer ties. Are they expensive? Those are lighter ones, uh, a, little, a wee bit, but mm -hmm. okay. And so you'd have a summer, I think my, mm -hmm. my son's college has a, a summer tie and another mm -hmm. scarf as well. The cufflinks. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you don't have to have those, do you? It's just like if, if you want to buy something. Like a merchandise. Yeah. Okay. but. They tend to, when they leave, they tend to say, look, I want a little piece of Cambridge to take with me. Mm -hmm. So you'll get your college plaque, or you might get the tie, or you might get the jersey. Yeah. Do you know there are... Above your bed. Yeah. Or your desk. There are even... Put it in your office. Bicycle. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. But there are bicycle covers for the rain with your college logo on them. Yeah. I believe it or not. Uh-huh. Now. Okay, so, but here, you know what? I, I think to go into King's, you need to pre-book. You do. See this here? This yeah. is Senate House. This is where you graduate. Uh -huh. This is regardless all... of what college you went. Yes. Yeah. So, uh -huh. and here's a little tradition for you. Yeah. When you graduate, the um, the PhD students, PhD students, always come first in the line. You walk from your college to yeah. here to get your degree. So they they line up the it's street a... here. I'll show you a picture. Right. Of my my son walking. Oh here. yeah. Yeah, so the PhD students with the red, you, you, you come first. You send me the picture and we will uh, edit it into the video. Please do. Yeah, if so you don't mind, of course. You walk PhD students in the red. Uh -huh. Behind them, master's degree. Behind them, undergraduates, white. <laughs> white. So the order of importance. And you walk, so if your college is far and, away. And master's will work hard. You see red for PhD and the master's what color they... Well, they're different colors according to different faculty. Ah, uh, PhD red. Okay. Red. Mm -hmm. um, and if you, your college is quite far away, you walk here. If your college is here, which is Gonville and Keys, this one here. You walk, you walk with your chin up, yeah? But, oh, yeah. listen, if you've got a degree from Cambridge, you walk with your chin up. <laughs> we you your, walk with your chin what up. What your son's chin up? Was, was uh, your son's chin he, up? Was, he was scared <laughs> was he? because you have to recite Latin when you receive your degree in that building there. Uh -huh. So he was going, I, what happens if I forget when I kneel down and they, they do the ceremony and you get you have to relax if you get oh you faint you know? oh no you have on the stage faint. <laughs> what kind of person faints no um and so it's quite nerve wracking yeah but the parents Cambridge graduates do not faint they don't faint <laughs> the parents go in there and sit watching the ceremony as I did with my son in there yeah again the same thing you probably were, were more nervous than your son yes exactly <laughs> spoken like a parent he's thinking yeah. come on don't forget don't forget. <laughs> ever experience that nervous excitement at a graduation ceremony. It's a feeling worth pursuing. Whether in Britain or elsewhere, we can help you get there. Just reach out. Now, let's return to our main topic. What about extras? What can you add to your portfolio to look uh, unique or well, better than others? It's about the work experience. Work experience. It's about life. Um, I, I tell you why, because they're not looking for academics if you want to study medicine. Yes, you're clever, but they want to look at a person that's involved in life because your job mm. is to deal with people. Show me you can deal with people. Exa examples. We for example, examples. if you do St. John's oh. uh, ambulance course, if you help with that, then you're interacting with people. It's related to medical injuries and stuff like that. You're volunteering. Volunteering. That's a good thing, yeah? Yeah, and do something like, um, Go and work in an old people's home. Mm -hmm. It's hard. Old people need a lot of attention. You get dirty and, and there are certain yeah. things about it. But you know what? That's where I know whether you're really dedicated or not. Mm -hmm. Not going in and watching surgery. Go and get your hands dirty. Yeah. Go to a, a, I tell you, go to a, a school with autistic children mm -hmm. or handicapped children. Hard. 
but you're showing me that you're committed to a range because you get a range of people from small children to old people. I want to see that you actually know the kinds of, you know, how these yeah, the people are. Where, whereas if you sit in your ivory tower and you're just an academic, how will you function as a doctor? You can't. Mm -hmm. When I interview you, I want to see someone that's bright and clever, but also can relate. I'll give you mm -hmm. an example. Ah, oh, Trinity Hall. <laughs> Oh, it's one of my favorites. I don't know if you can get College in. closed, no entry for visitors. Okay. Trinity College, the big one is over here, but this is intimate. Have you heard of Rachel? I, let's do the uh, pretending. Let's oh, pretend like a know. professor. Let, we want to come back. We don't want to get thrown away. <laughs> well, I was going to say, you know, have you heard of Rachel Weiss? Let's go this way. Famous actress. Uh, Rachel Weiss, she's married to Cra Daniel I'm Craig. Bad with names. Okay, well, she went here. Okay, very good. Right. What do Isaac Newton, Sasha Baron Cohen, and Stephen Hawking have in common? Cambridge. Newton's discoveries transformed physics and mathematics. Baron Cohen, famous for Borat and Ali G, studied here too. Stephen Hawking, among the greatest scientific minds of our time, taught at Cambridge for decades. If you're considering medical education in Britain, this is where brilliance has historically emerged. Who knows? Perhaps you'll be the next notable name to graduate from these halls. Everything else is not that important? No. I, mean, I like, would never say that. Like, what if you're a creative person? What if you're, like, drawing, maybe? And you want to do medicine? Or maybe you're playing piano. I, I, I've heard that some say that if you want to be a surgeon, it's good uh, for you to demonstrate that you play some instruments using your fingers. Yeah. No? No. Would that be? That's very true, but undergraduate level, mm -hmm. uh, you basically have to train to do medicine. There are so few people that can qualify to be a surgeon mm -hmm. that essentially those motor skills motor are required skills. only yeah. for the, like when you post doc and whatever, but as a GP, yeah. as a doctor in the NHS, you know, but music is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and my son did music as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to be a surgeon is like eight, nine, ten years after postgraduate. So at this moment, they're looking to see if you can study undergraduate in medicine. Mm -hmm. Music is great, and I'm not diminishing that. I'm not saying that you shouldn't. Music, my son did up to grade seven, grade eight, theory as well as practical, it's great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying that um, they tend to look at you as a whole, a lot more. What else can you offer? Music, fantastic. If you like ballet, great. Even ballet? Yeah, ballet, music. If you're creative, you like to paint, great. But as I said, with your A-level choices, do the phys, sorry, do the biology, do the chemistry, and then you can have a, like a wider spread of other A-levels if you want. But you know, there are some schools, they have uh, medicine-related extracurricular programs and activities. It's becoming really popular now. Many yeah. boarding schools, many schools have a private schools. So I don't know about the state schools, but privates do. Yeah. Yeah. They'll form little groups, like self-support groups. Uh-huh. But, um, and, yeah. And they do all this, uh, what's it called? Uh, Super di Dissections and well, they they dissection club. <laughs> they can do, yeah. What if you are uh, constant blood? You know, you need to... Don't be afraid, afraid so, of blood. Blood. Well, yeah, I think if you're afraid of blood, maybe medicine's not for you. <laughs> maybe um, yeah, it might not okay. be the thing. Mm -hmm. um, Guys, if you really want to try to get into medicine, uh, we don't want to talk about this uh, whole thing in one video. Yes. I think it's best uh, uh, for those uh, ambitious what course have you here? And very strong academically, those who like chemistry and biology, uh, students who want to go into medicine, speak to you in person. Yes. Right? Because I think e it would be a good idea to meet you in person. Every person mm -mm. Is, is different and it's a cliche, but you might do biology and chemistry, but your A-levels might be different from other people who are applying for medicine. Mm -hmm. Your interests might not be the same. So you might, be, you might want to be a pediatrician. You might want to uh, be an oncologist. So at this stage, it's very difficult to make that choice. But if you are thinking of that, then that's another factor that when we talk to you, and, and also what happens if you can't get access to a GP in a hospital to do your work experience? What can I do? Come and see us and we'll advise you your local area, how to get some of this experience. We'll even show you what courses on Corsia 
and uh, Khan Academy and places like that where you can do these short courses that shows that you're interested, you're finding out more about medicine, especially the biomedical. Lots of things online that I've recommended that helps you to prepare for the biomedicine. Online courses. Online courses. Okay. I tend to look at the free ones because look, not everyone's got lots of money, mm -hmm. but some you can pay for and you can go. But what we do is we show you, we show you the kind of things that this is the prep, mm -hmm. the, the reading, the podcasts. And so we'll not give you too many. We'll suggest an area and then yeah, it will help you to prepare. There's so much uh, now to explore on the, on the internet. Yeah. It's so accessible, isn't it? That's why it's but so you much, need, it's overwhelming. You, you need to know where to look. Exactly. Yeah. Everyone has got it online. Mm -hmm. How do international students actually navigate UK medical school applications? Start by thoroughly researching medical universities. Rankings, programs, and specializations matter. Begin preparation two, two, two to three years early, focusing heavily on chemistry, biology, and mathematics. What's required? Excellent grades, volunteering experience, and strong UK CAT BMAT scores. Language proficiency through IELTS or TOEFL is non-negotiable. Write compelling personal statements, practice interview techniques, and research scholarship opportunities. Success comes from early planning and systematic execution, not last-minute cramming. Cambridge is a buzzing place, you know? Student life here is very, very active. My punting just across here. I'll take you over the bridge and you can see the river, mm -hmm. the river Cam. All right, well, thank you for watching this video right to the end. And uh, make sure to follow the links in the description because this is our second hour now in Cambridge. Yes. This is our fifth topic. And uh, yeah, we, we, we're still here. Beautiful day. Beautiful day. We, yeah, we're not uh, going uh, yet to Windsor because we're traveling to Windsor after, after we're done here. And this is pointing. Oh, 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 oh. I, I think not as easy as it looks. Yeah, not no. as easy as it looks. And you know the funny fact before we wrap it up this video, that apparently, yeah, there we go. In Cambridge, pointing from the back of the boat. Yes. In Oxford, from the front. Oh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they compete in everything. Do you know they compete Oxford and Cambridge? They compete against each other all the time. All the time. All the time. Yeah. And here. Uh huh. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. I tried once and uh, uh oh, almost uh, turned into a disaster. Really? Yeah. Hopefully, this video provided valuable guidance for your journey. If medical education in Britain is your goal, don't delay preparation. Admission is a marathon, not a sprint. Questions remaining. Want personalized consultation about faculty selection? Leave a request through the link in the description. Like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss future content. Best of luck with your preparation, and we'll see you in upcoming videos.